This is the X100F. It came out in 2017. I've shot with it for the last five years. You guys know that. You love it on the channel. This is the Fujifilm X100V. It came out in 2020. I was part of the launch program. Collectively, I've got a lot of thoughts and experience with the X100, and I've got many requests for what I'd like to see in the next iteration, which I'm predicting will be called the X100R. R for Roku, which is six in Japanese. We've already had the X100, the X100S for second, T for third, F for fourth, V for fifth, because we can't use F again. So let's go R. If it's not R, then it's gonna be H for hex. I know Fujifilm watch these videos and I'm actually going to dinner with them tomorrow. So I'm gonna give these requests in person as well. Okay, so first of all, let's talk physical form factor. So as you'll know, I love the X100 for its small, pocketable, fixed lens, it makes you really focus on the photography because there's no other gear to get in the way. I actually think the X100V is a great step up in terms of design. The change to the finish in the metal is just beautiful and I love this straight line across the top. Overall, aesthetically, I do love it, but there's a few things functionally and usability wise that I'm not 100% on board with. So primarily, the biggest thing that you'll notice between the X100F and the X100V is the lack of a D-pad on the X100V. I don't know why they removed it. Fujifilm started removing it from a few different camera lines, more on the lower end camera rather than the more professional end. And I'm not sure why. You see, the D-pad is more than just menu selection. You can actually use it for quick actions. And with a camera like the X100, which is very simple in design, you've got just your ISO dial, an exposure comp, a shutter speed, and your aperture all on physical dials. If you want to start changing other things, you kind of run out of buttons. And so it means that you do have to dive into the menu if you want to start doing white balance shifts and other things. That D-pad is so fundamentally useful for fast workflows. Removing it was a big error and I hope they bring it back. The X100, like all X-Series cameras, is an APS-C size sensor and it's always had a 23mm fixed lens. When I talk about focal lengths, I talk about it in relation to the camera that it's on. Let's not do any comparisons and equivalents and other things because millimeter is millimeter. This is a 23mm lens, I'd love it to be a 35mm lens. I enjoy that tighter crop. Now I know that's not for everyone, and so I actually would like to see two versions of the X100, or maybe even a spin-off line. You could call the 35mm version just the X35. That would be great, 35mm f2 lens. But I think the wider angle view could perhaps be an 18mm. And I think this could actually really help a lot of people who want things a little bit wider than the current 23. And for those who want it a little bit tighter towards the 35 mil, people like myself. And the reason I say 18 mil is because I think it would be achievable with my next point. So Fujifilm are known for using the same sensors and the same sort of technology and processes throughout their whole line of cameras. It just takes a little bit of time for it to trickle down throughout the whole lineup. So that being said, the current generation of sensors that are on the X-H2S, the X-T5 and the X-H2 leaves us with two options for sensors. They're currently using either a stacked sensor, 26 megapixel, as is on the X-H2S, or a 40 megapixel sensor, as is on the X-T5 and the X-H2. As much as I would love to see a stacked sensor on this paired with the leaf shutter for incredibly fast readout results, I actually think they'd be wiser to put a 40 megapixel sensor in this. And if you use an 18 mil lens, that means that you can give people the option to crop in a little bit for that tighter field of view towards the 23 mil, if you like. And those crops will come into play in Lightroom, but still be non-destructive so that you can actually revert back to the full 18 mil if you need. To be honest, I can't see them putting a stabilized sensor in there. I just don't think the body is big enough. If they found a way to shrink that technology down even further, then I'd be amazed if they can. But realistically, I don't think the camera is gonna get any bigger to accommodate that. And so I just don't think it's gonna have IBIS involved. So although the lens construction was redesigned and rebuilt for the X100V, the actual physical design of it didn't really Really change too much and so there's one aspect that I'd still love to see on the new X100 and that would be more focus markers physically etched into the lens that would make manual focus far easier and also I think it would add to the overall aesthetic appeal of the camera and while we're at it if we can make the whole camera weather resistant without needing to put a filter on the front 
then that would just be brilliant. So as you might remember, I made a video of 11 requests for the X100V, uh, funnily enough, 11 months before the X100V even came out, and a lot of those requests and predictions were actually listened to by Fujifilm, so much so that they actually invited me to be a part of the X100V launch in London. Unfortunately, I didn't get to actually use the camera before the event, so it was a little bit weird being on stage talking about it as a first impression. And then of course COVID happened and I just decided not to buy one uh, or to use one. But that being said, I am hoping that by making this video and by having a great relationship with Fujifilm in Japan, that things may change and I may be able to get even more requests listened to. Now there is one request on that list that was not really addressed in any way and I would love to see this in a graphite color option. So they did a graphite version of the X-Pro2 and oh my god it is beautiful. Just the slightly dimmed silver that's not fully black is just gorgeous and the fact that it's a fixed lens you're not going to be pairing it with any other lens it means that it's always going to match the lens to the body of the camera. It's not going to be like one of those weird situations where you've got a specific camera body and no lenses to match. If you did the whole thing graphite or like a gun metal, I'm still hoping for it. So let's see if they'll listen. Leave your comment down below by the way if any of these requests are things that you're interested in as well. Some other physical things that I'd love to see that will actually be borrowed from the X-H2 are the strap lugs. I think that's what they're called. The little nubbiny bits that you put your strap through on the camera. On the X-H2 they made them flush with the body yet they are wider so you can put a strap through so much quicker and it doesn't use these little triangular ring things that you attach. I actually remove those from my camera because I find that they rattle and they kind of scratch the body. It means I have to force the strap through this tiny little eyelet um, which is actually very difficult to do and it's very difficult to remove uh, and so when I film videos like this I think it looks a little bit messy when I've got it but it's just way too much hassle to take the strap on and off. You see this is just a massive problem. I'm just not a fan of that at all. By the way, how beautiful are the manhole covers in Japan? I love them so much. Second to that, I'd love the focus lever to be the same design as what's on the X-H2 and the X-H2S. I just love that slightly bigger tactile grip. It's way more usable, it's way more comfortable. In the cold, it's definitely more usable because you don't really have much feeling in your fingertips. And with this one being so small, sometimes it actually feels a little bit sharp, uh, but also you've just got no feeling to it. And so a bigger nubbin is, uh, better, I don't know. <laughs> and so a bigger nubbin would be big in my world. What? <laughs> and, so, and so I would definitely love a bigger nubbin, wouldn't you? Okay, so my next point is potentially a little bit controversial and it's related to the EVF OVF. Now this little module in here, the way that you can switch between electronic view mode and optical view mode is actually a very expensive part to make and it's what makes this camera so expensive to buy. For me personally, I only ever shoot with the OVF maybe one or two percent of the time. Now I know that that's me personally, there are people who love the OVF, but I would be interested to know as the EVFs have improved, how many people still like to use an optical viewfinder. If there was an option for no optical viewfinder at all, would that make the camera significantly cheaper or would it destroy the essence and soul of this camera? I'm a little bit undecided myself, but if it could knock off two, maybe 300 pounds or dollars worth off the value of the camera, that could be a thing that would just push me into wanting that. Because like I said, I rarely use the optical viewfinder. It's a really cool feature to have for sure, but I don't know, times are tight and um, money's even shorter. Furthermore, with the EVF, I'd love to see the resolution bump up even more. The EVF on the X-H2S is just a joy to use. It's so clear, so bright, such a high frequency as well. And I just really enjoy taking pictures and video through the EVF. I'm not really sure where this trend has come from of a lot of people taking pictures out in front. Maybe it's come from TikTok and the whole, you know, real situation. For me, I still use the viewfinder. It adds an extra point of contact for stable shots. And also it just allows me to really consume myself into the photo and see all details. So if I can have that resolution bumped up even further and the refresh rate, then I think that would be a great addition to have. 
is my final set of requests are actually firmware related and they could come across to all Fujifilm cameras in theory. Whether they will or not, I'm not sure. Um, but I would love to see some of the controls for things like your shadow and highlights uh, when you're creating JPEG recipes. I'd love to see them become even more specific. So on the X-T4 and on the X-H2 series, you can do 0.5 increments. So you can go from a negative 0.5 to 1 to 1.5 to 2 to 2.5 and so on and so forth. I'd love to see that become even more specific. But likewise, I'd love to see a knee option where you can change where that contrast midpoint is on your tone curve between shadow and highlights. So do you want your contrast to actually be closer towards the higher end of the highlights rather than always from the center point of just controlling shadows and highlights on a basic level? A little bit more specific like that and you could open so many opportunities for JPEG recipes in camera. As you know, I love shooting JPEG with my Fujifilm, especially the X100. It's just a great social camera day in, day out. You can just take images, you can share them with friends immediately. Furthermore, to my incremental adjustments for shadows and highlights, I'd love to see more than seven options for saving those as a film recipe or as a JPEG preset within the camera. Maybe there'd be a way to separate the functional aspect of your custom mode, so your C123 all the way to seven, from the image quality, your grain, your highlights, your shadows, the um, picture profile and the film simulation, if you could separate those so that you could have your custom modes for anything that's mechanical, your shutter speed, your aperture, the shooting mode, and your image style, maybe as a drop down or a secondary menu that you could have, I don't know, 20 or 30 different recipes saved in the camera. I'd love to see that. I've directly asked them about this at Fujifilm and they were very keen to hear more about it and explain it. Uh, it's a complete reworking of how the camera works internally, so I know it's a massive feature, but man, if we could get some noise in the comments to support that, I would love to have a library of recipes stored within the camera, rather than having to just pick and choose between only a few. And to add to that, an extra feature on the image presets and styles, I'd love to add some color grading options. So the ability to set maybe with the hue saturation luminance values for your shadow, maybe your midtones and your highlights, just so that you could add a little bit of a tonal variety to those images. That would open so many doors for variations and flexibility of creating images in camera. And honestly, people love to shoot JPEG only with these. If I could highlight one thing on my list that I would love, it would just be a 35mm lens option. And maybe it would be called the X35 and it could just be its own little line of camera alongside the X100. It is such a popular little camera. It is a gateway drug into Fujifilm. It was my gateway into it. And I've loved the journey I've had with it. So many other people have joined the journey because of these videos and yeah, I think there's opportunity to squeeze out a different version of it that tailors to a slightly different audience because there's honestly something magic about the fixed lens format and uh, I'd love to see it. So, Fujifilm, if you're watching this, please take a lot of these into consideration. I know you will. And uh, for those of you who also have your thoughts, leave them down in the comments below. Let's build up some noise. Let's get some community feedback. And uh, thanks for your support on the videos lately. So thanks for watching. And if you want to see another Fujifilm video, then this is definitely the one to watch. And we'll check you from Japan super soon. See you later. Bye-bye.